Honestly meet yourself. We cannot substitute real friendships for temporary acquaintances. Likewise, someone else's responsibility cannot be a substitute for your own responsibility. When I first joined Sam Houston State Chi Alpha, we were reaching around 250 students for Jesus as I remember it. Eli, Jason, Eli could say something else. This is just my memory. But by the time I was a junior, we had been reaching about 500 students for Jesus for the past two years, and this was considered the largest Chi Alpha in the nation. But our pastors operated with this conviction that good enough is not good enough, and the belief that making disciples of all nations always means we must find a way to reach all the nations. And when they began to examine why this Chi Alpha was seemingly stuck, they reasoned it was easy for irresponsibility to be hidden in an audience of 500 students. A small group leader who found, fed, and fought for zero could go unnoticed amongst their more responsible peers who found, fed, and fought for many. So how do you resolve this dilemma? They decided to split the largest Chi Alpha in the nation into three separate groups operating independently on different nights with different staffs and different student leaders. The belief was, this is from the outside looking in, but the belief was it's easy to be irresponsible in a group of 500. It's much more noticeable to be irresponsible in a group of 100. And shame is just as much a motivator as glory. Yeah. <laughs> what? This is my take on it. <laughs> when our first leadership retreat ended and this change was announced, our campus pastor responsible for our group, Mr. Jason Bell, took all of our leaders. He took all of our leaders of our group to the Chi Alpha house, this very house. And he asked the 20 small group leaders to sit in this front row of the house. So I'm sitting where you're sitting, man. This venue held about 200 seats as I could remember it. Maybe this place is smaller. Maybe I'm just older. I don't know. Uh, but he asked us to look behind at the 180 empty seats around. And after a minute of silence that lasted an eternity, Jason speaks, if you do not go out and make disciples, every night will feel as empty as this one. It was then the weight of responsibility fell on our shoulders. If we do nothing, then nothing will change. Chi Alpha had experienced glory years. Heroes had come and gone, but that was yesterday. And all that was left to change the world from Huntsville, Texas, was us. Someone else's responsibility cannot be a substitute for our responsibility. When this happens, ministries regress. Souls are not one. We're not advancing heaven. We're being advanced against by hell. And this is where biblical illiteracy can get the best of us. We trust it's better to wait for audible words and visual visions than it is to obey the Bible's actual verses. Jesus has already prophesied in Matthew 24, the gospel must be preached to the ends of the earth as a witness and then the end will come. The heroes of the Bible have already demonstrated they were on mission because they assumed making disciples was a default green light. And if audible words and visual visions did have to be sent, it was to redirect their efforts, not to begin them. And this is where spirituality without sobriety can get the best of us. We tell people we have to pray about going on mission trips to destinations, but vacations to these same destinations require no divinity, just credit cards. All the while, Isaiah the prophet, without knowing budgets or time frames or locations or hearing from God, simply said to God, send me and I will go. As Scott Martin has said, this is how the Mormons give two years while, while Christians give excuses. And this is why we prefer to sing lies instead of say them. Jesus is Lord until he asks the uncomfortable. And then we bring up subjective calls to disobey his objective commands as if a Christian can have the phrase, no, King Jesus, in their vocabulary. This is where calling can get the best of us. The Bible word being used in the modern day has one meaning then and has not changed now. It means invited. God is going to make disciples of all nations. You're invited to go with them. Jesus will be confessed by every tribe and every tongue, and you're invited to introduce him. And this is where family can get the best of us. You can hear my daughter squawking as she goes, and one day you'll, you know, be mothers and fathers, and we have this, in her crib, there's these sheets of the world, and as I rock her to sleep at night, I cry, because I'm looking at that world, and I'm saying, Lord Jesus, can you really send her to the ends of the earth? Can I give you this precious daughter that I've waited seven years to have? Can I say no, King Jesus? And then God so gently responds, How is it that people are happy to have the gospel at the cost of my family, 
but no one can have the gospel at the cost of your family. All the while Jesus preaches in Matthew 10, if you love family more than me, you're unworthy of me. Meaning God is God and we are not, and God is God and family is not. And this is where the devil can get the best of us. We insist we must feel like it before we are responsible for God, believing that we have to be true to ourselves, forgetting all the while Jesus says if we want to follow Jesus, we must deny ourselves. Self-denial, not self-fulfillment, is the secret to a Christian's happy life. So I hope this is clear. It is not the director's job to grow this Chi Alpha or the staff's job to grow a Chi Alpha or the intern's job to grow a Chi Alpha, although it is the intern's job to run a Chi Alpha. (laughs) It is everyone's job to grow this Chi Alpha, especially yours. But to advance heaven, our relationship to Jesus cannot be someone else's relationship to Jesus. As we throw off the sin that we love more than Jesus and weight that we think about more than Jesus, we discover that Jesus is simply asking us to do what He has done and is doing. Jesus did not let anyone be a substitute for His own devotion or community or responsibility. He grew in wisdom and stature. He memorized the law and the prophets. Now He prays for us day and night at the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah! Jesus has His own personal devotional life. And Jesus went out and found the disciples and he took them fishing and hunting and was transparent and vulnerable. And Jesus first called them friends. Jesus did not delegate the atonement. He grabbed a cross with joy. He drank the cup of suffering so we could drink the cup of life. 